In most web projects, exception handling is usually done by either using a middleware, or by using filters, or by using libraries such as Mediator, we could do it using pipeline behaviors. However, now in .NET, we have a new interface for this purpose, which is able to register exception handlers, and you can also use the built-in middleware to handle exceptions in a more graceful way. In this video, we'll see how can we use this new feature in an example web API project. So here I have some example .NET 8 web API project, and currently, to handle exceptions, it is using actually a custom middleware. So if I go to the error handling middleware class, you can see that we are just basically having a big try-catch block with each error type defined in the try-catch. And depending on the type that we are actually catching, we'll return a given status code and also write some message to our API client. In the case that any of those exceptions aren't catched, we have this very generic exception that is just returning 500 and something with the wrong information to our API client. In this project, I have also two example minimize API endpoints. That first of them is actually throwing a generic exception, and the second one is throwing a more specific one, which is not found exception. So let's go ahead and try to execute both of them, and let's see what will be the response going back to our client. So in the first case, when I'm throwing the generic exception, if I just let the current error handling middleware to execute, we'll see that we get a 500 internal server error, and the message something went wrong, as you just seen in the implementation class. But if I execute the endpoint that throws not found exception, well, in this case, if I just let the program to continue, we'll see that now we get 404 not found exception. So having this custom middleware implemented and used in our Web API project, as you can see, we are returning different status codes to our Web API client, depending on the error thrown in the application. So maybe let's try, go ahead and rewrite this feature using this new I exception handlers. So first of all, I'll just comment out the use middleware that we used previously. And maybe let's go ahead and create a new class. I'll just call it maybe app exception handler. And this class should implement the I exception handler interface. And its only method to implement is the try handle async method. Its three parameters are of course the HTTP context from which we can get the information about the incoming request. We can also write to the response and set the status code. Then the second parameter is of course the exception that is thrown during the Web API request processing. And we also have cancellation token in case it's needed. So as this class is going to be registered in the dependency injection container, you can also utilize the constructor to actually inject any type of references. But for the sake of this demonstration, I will just use the iLogger interface and create a private field for this type of reference. So now in the try handle asking method, if I wanted to actually replace the existing middleware, well, I could do it like this. For example, using the switch expression, we could check that exception is type of forbid exception. And for that case, I would just go ahead and return a tuple of a 403 status code and no error message. So maybe let's just define a tuple with two values. So the first one will be int status code and the second one will be string error message. All right, so having these two defined, maybe let's go ahead and cover the rest of the cases. So the exception type bad request exception would return 400 status code and the error message from a thrown exception. Then in the next case, I will just handle not found exception, returning 404 and returning the message from our switch. And besides those three, I would also handle the default case. So for any type of exception that is not one of them, in that case, I will just return 500 and something with wrong information. So now having this tuple defined from the switch expression, we can just go ahead and use the HTTP context response and set the status code to the value that is coming back from our switch expression. And now to write the message to our client. Again, we could go ahead and use the response and with the and with the write as JSON async, we could just pass in the error message coming back from our tuple. And as this is a synchronous method, I will have to await it and make the whole method declaration to be asynchronous with the async keyword. And maybe before that, I could also go ahead and use the logger. So I'll just log the exception and maybe the error message. So right now you might wonder what should we return from this try handle async method as the return type is defined to be a value task of a boolean. So basically, we'll have to return a value of true or false. And true would mean that the exception is properly handled, and there is no need to go ahead and search for another exception handlers. We can just stop the error handling in that place. But if you would return a false value from this try handle as the method, that would mean that the middleware that is actually handling the exception with our custom exception handler classes, it would try to go ahead and find the next implementation of the iExceptionHandler interface 
to actually handle the thrown exception. So as long as the registered exception handlers will not return a true from the try handle async, it will just keep on going and executing the next implementation of the try handle async method. Maybe to demonstrate that behavior, in a minute we'll add a separate exception handler, but right now I'll just return true. And this will mean that we are done with the exception handling. There's no need to actually process any further. Okay, so having this class defined, we'll have to go back to the program CS, and now we'll have to register that. But to register such interface, I will not use add scope, I will not use add transient, I will use a special dedicated method, which is add exception handler of a generic type for our app exception handler like this. And having this exception handler registered, we can use the exception handler middleware, which has been already existing in .NET for more than eight years. And for now, it's been used mostly by MVC application or Razor Pages application to actually map a certain page or a certain URL to be used to handle exceptions. And the user of the application would be redirected to such URL in case of an exception thrown during the request. But in our case, we don't have to redirect the user. So I'll just use it without any parameter. But with this implementation, if I go ahead and start the Web API project and try to execute one of those two minimal API endpoints, well, as you can see, we are getting an exception, but this is of course not our exception. It's just saying that we'll have to set the exception handling path or the exception handling property in order for the exception handler middleware to use properly. And for now, this is actually a known bug and Microsoft currently suggests to do a small workaround which is passing an empty lambda with a configuration. And with this implementation, now the exception handler middleware just works fine. So again, let's go ahead and throw some exception by the throw minimal endpoint. And as you can see, we are throwing the exception. Maybe let's go ahead and put a breakpoint in this try handle async method. And if I click continue, we are of course hitting this breakpoint. And right now, as this exception is just a generic one, we will be returning 500 and some error message, something went wrong. So the client of our API, is getting the 500 internal server error and something went wrong as the information back. But if I true not follow exception, well, in this case, again, in the switch statement, we are now returning 404 and some error message from this exception. And this will mean that the client is going to get 404 not found exception and the message from the exception thrown. So in this way, having our custom exception handler class defined and used with the existing exception handler middleware, we are able to actually handle exception without the need of having to define a try catch block because this is actually done through the existing middleware. All right, then maybe just to demonstrate, I will go ahead and try to remove this default case from the switch statement. And in that scenario, I'll just go ahead and return a default tuple. So if we would check that the, for example, status code is equal to default value, in that case, I would just return false. And this would mean that the exception is not properly handled and the exception handler middleware would try to go ahead and find a second registered exception handler and execute its try handle async method. So of course, right now, we need a second handler. So maybe let's call it general exception handler. And of course, this class would also implement the I exception handler interface. So as you already know, we can just use the constructor to inject any kind of reference to this class. So maybe again, let's go ahead and use the I logger for the type general exception handler. And for this reference, we'll just go ahead and create a private field. All right, so now in the try handle async method, I'll just use the logger. And then maybe instead of returning 500, I'll just go ahead and return 501, just to make sure that we are actually returning status code from within the second exception handler. And to the client, we'll just return message, something went wrong. And finally, we can just return true. And this will mean that the exception is properly handled. So right now, we'll have to go back again to our program and register this new general exception handler. So again, using the add exception handler method, I can just register that by using the type definition. So let's go ahead and run the program again. And right now, if I true the not follow exception, it should be handled by our app exception handler. So let's actually go ahead and try to execute such endpoint. And as you can see, we are going through the first custom exception handler. And as we found the not follow exception, well, in that case, it will just return 404 and some error message to the client and just return true. And this would mean that even if I try to set up a breakpoint in the second exception handler, well, the flow will not go here because the request is ended. And now our client has the information about the 404 not found and some message returned to the user. But if we true a generic exception, well, in this case, we'll try to handle that in our app exception handler. But as this is a default case, which is not handled in this class, we'll just return false. 
and this would mean that the exception handled middleware is going to execute the next one in the loop, which is in our case general exception handler, and actually this one is going to properly handle this exception, returning true value, and writing back to the client 501 and something went wrong message. So as you can see, now the client got 501 coming back from our second custom exception filter. But if you want to register more than one exception handler, it is crucial to actually register them in a the correct order, because in this change order, right now, if any type of exception is thrown, it will go to the general exception handler and it will never get to the app exception handler. To make sure, I'll just start the API with this implementation so that general exception handler is the first one to be registered. And if I execute that throw not found minimal endpoint, even though it should go to the app exception handler, it will go through the general exception handler first. And here, as we are returning true value, it will not go any further and the client will get the message 501 not implemented and something went wrong. So it is very important to actually make sure to register the custom exception handlers in the correct order, just like we do register middlewares.